Hey folks, it's Jonathan Denwood here. We're doing another workshop, a live workshop here with my colleague Haroon, who in the WP Tonic team is our buddy boss marketing automation genius. Um, in this um, workshop, we're going to be covering, because we've been asked a few times about this, about how you integrate WordPress with the objective of doing a podcast. Um, I'm big into podcasting. I run one of the largest podcasts in the WordPress space. We've been, I've been doing that for almost six years now. Um, and we have a lot of people interested in getting into podcasting, i.e. for themselves or for clients. So, Haroon, I've kind of done the introduction. Where are we going on this little journey, Haroon? Thank you, Jonathan. And uh, hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be back on the show again for another interesting session, this time looking at podcasts. Um, and especially since uh, the pandemic, even anyone who wasn't previously podcasting, now everyone has a podcast. And uh, even before that, podcasting has been growing like there's no tomorrow. And there's so much independent content being produced and broadcasted and uh, listened and watched live that it's, it's, it's just crazy. And since we from the WordPress community like to keep everything that we can within WordPress, uh, because for us, there are plenty of benefits. Number one, control over everything the way we want. Number two would probably be um, the ability to integrate it natively with uh, the entire WordPress stack that we use with other tools and uh, sim simply having it as a native part of your, like a cohesive native single unit part of your entire website so that when users visit your website they want to watch or listen to your podcast they don't have to uh, go to another domain there they don't have to uh, basically switch sites to uh, to land on your podcast so today we're going to look at how you can bring an existing podcast into wordpress or uh, create a podcast from scratch on wordpress to begin with and before I start to get into the nitty gritty of what tools to use, what tools not to use, best practices and all, um, the first thing of the utmost importance uh, that I want to mention is despite having that urge, and I know it can be quite an urge that, hey, why should I pay hundreds of dollars to my, pod to my podcast service provider when I'm paying maybe a few dollars a month or, or uh, already like some fee to my host and I have the web server space on my host for it. My site is only using maybe um, one GB and I've got my hosting plan allows me five GB. So I can have plenty of audio files on that five GB. So the, the temptation can be quite strong, but uh, I would recommend against that temptation because of one primary reason, bandwidth. The moment you have even a slightly respectable number of audience and you, you're serving audio files rather than text files, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are all text files. They take very little space. Uh, but the moment you start serving audio files from a web host that isn't tuned to serve audio files, your bandwidth usage is going to go through the roof. And with that, your primary site will slow down, uh, which is something you absolutely don't want. So what sort of solution should we look for? It's something that integrates natively in WordPress in terms of giving you the power to uh, upload from WordPress, giving you the power to manage from WordPress, but the actual media files, they should be hosted with a podcast hosting platform. And the great thing is some of the most respectable players in the industry uh, that offer podcast hosting, they offer one uh, WordPress solution or the other to integrate their services with WordPress. Let's take a look at the options. Now I'm going to share my screen. Oh, I've got to let you do that. I apologize, but here but we no go. Worries. Always forget that. Off you go. So 
so the first service that comes to my mind because i've worked with them and i've implemented it for several clients is gastos and uh, pretty much every client that i've implemented this for has been happy with it i've been happy with the implementation experience myself because they offer such an amazing wordpress plugin for the purpose so gastos is uh, yeah, i need to uh, slightly interrupt there i just need to make it to the knowledge of the audience that Castos is a major sponsor of the WP Tonic podcast, but that is not affecting Haroon's choice here or mine at all. Um, we actually both feel it's a great service, and that's why. But uh, just for clarity, I just want you, the audience, to know that they are a major sponsor of the show. And I didn't even know that before Jonathan told me that. And even if I didn't know that, I would uh, rate Castos as my primary choice and uh, my first go-to service when it comes to setting up a, a podcast for WordPress. Even if I'm setting it up for a client who has nothing to do with WordPress and they don't want to use WordPress, uh, that's what I'm coming to now. So Castos isn't a WordPress specific service. It's a podcast hosting service. and they offer you a full web interface for managing your podcasts, managing the episodes, managing different uh, series and seasons, and managing multiple shows. And if you wish to do things the WordPress way, they have this excellent plugin called Seriously Simple Podcasting. It's available on the WordPress repo. It's a free plugin. You can use the plugin even if you don't have a Castos account. Uh, it'll, it'll let you install the plugin for free uh, with, with absolutely no limitations. And you can manage multiple shows, you can manage uh, multiple guests. It gives you a very nifty WordPress native interface uh, for uploading podcasts. It basically creates a new custom post type of podcast. And then with, for that custom port, uh, post type, it gives you all the necessary fields for uploading the data that's essential for a podcast RSS feed. And then it creates the RSS feed that you can then enter into uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever you use to publish your podcast to those apps and those services that list uh, pretty much every podcast on the face of this planet. Um, so it does it all for you within the WordPress ecosystem. and. Uh, you can you can simply use it without castos by hosting the files on your web host but as i had mentioned earlier that's uh, not a good idea you're you're going to be saving maybe a couple of hundred bucks let's see the pricing of castos for most people their starter plan of 19 dollars a month or 190 a year when paid annually for most podcasts it's going to be more than sufficient up to 20000 downloads per month and um, up to 100 private subscribers, uh, private subscribers can be paid, uh, like our, our paid subscribers. But well, they didn't really have these download limits earlier on. Maybe this, this is something that they've added due to abuse of their service because they allow every account to have unlimited podcasts. So you can like literally run a podcasting platform of your own by installing, um, uh, cast, installing seriously simple podcasting on your server creating different podcasts for every user selling those users those accounts so you you could literally do that yeah, so maybe but 20 because, 20 000 downloads is still pretty yeah. generous so isn't it pretty generous yes and no, there's not uh, many it's not many podcasts you're in the top 10 percent of podcasts yeah. that get to twenty thousand downloads a month absolutely absolutely and you get unlimited podcasts and episodes with it it doesn't limit you to just have one podcast with one rss feed maybe you want uh, a a podcast available to the general public and then you want one that's restricted to your vip audience uh, you can do that you can have completely different podcasts or you can have different podcasts on different subjects you can even have one podcast and then within wordpress have you know wordpress lets you use taxonomies like categories and tags so you can use podcast categories to have multiple sub shows within that show in the wordpress interface like sky's the limit because of uh, every episode being just a cpt 
so you can do whatever you can with a with a custom post type uh, you can do with your podcast post type with seriously simple podcasting and if you go the wordpress route while having this uh, this plan your files are still hosted on Castro servers, which they've fine tuned to serve media files. They're not web hosting servers, they're media hosting servers, which have the right sort of bandwidth, the right sort of processing uh, capacity, right sort of memory to efficiently serve those files. And you get the benefits of the WordPress ecosystem. And you can really uh, have like, let's say ACF relationships between your, your uh, blog posts and your, uh, podcast episodes. You can have ACF relationships and further ACF custom fields for your podcast and relationships between, let's say, podcast and another CPT that you might have on your site, which, which could be like an expert. So you have a site that is a directory of experts, and then you have podcast episodes linked to those experts in, like based on what expert you've featured in, in a particular episode. You can do all of that nice stuff in WordPress using this. Yeah, now let's and also also they deal with the RSS feed thing, don't they? Because yes. that can be a little bit. Oh yes. Um, especially if you're not used to dealing with that. that, they've got a very nice, simple interface to deal with the RSS feeds, haven't they? Yes, true. And if you're using their web system, you use their web interface. If you're using the serious, simple, seriously simple podcasting plugin then you get the RSS management interface also in the WordPress dashboard. So you can manage your feed, you can set all the parameters of your feed, the, all, all the metadata for your feed within your familiar WordPress dashboard, just the way you would uh, change settings of any other plugin uh, in WordPress. And for multiple podcasts, you get multiple feed URLs, all that good stuff. <clears throat> now, if we consider other options. If you want to consider other options, the first one and probably the one of the most well known uh, options in, in the industry is Libsyn. And for good reason, they're also an excellent yeah. provider. Yeah. Uh, they've, they've got probably when it comes to the feature set, they've probably got every feature that any podcaster is ever going to need, which Castos does not have. Nah. So if you need some very obscure uh, I just feature, wanted to, I just want to say that I was with Lip, Lipson before I moved over to Castos, um, but they are a very credible, excellent company, um, and everything you've just said. Um, it was just that um, Castos that they're very embedded in WordPress, offer really excellent value. Um, and in some ways, Lipson offers too many options. But on the other hand, they're very credible and they, they've got a long history in podcasting, haven't they, Harun? Absolutely, absolutely. And yes, they, they are probably one of the oldest players in the game. And they can get a bit more expensive as you grow. But the reasons why I do not recommend it for those getting started or for those who want to have small shows, not like an enterprise podcast, is uh, their interface can seem a bit dated and you, you, get, you get decision fatigue because of the sheer number of options you presented in that interface. These are the two reasons. Otherwise, in terms of the product, in terms of the service itself, it's excellent. It's probably yeah. one of the best, if not the best. But that user experience kills it for me. And uh, if it kills it for me, then I can only imagine uh, what it does for, for people who are less uh, technically inclined, who just want a simple interface to get their podcast started. Well, every time, pricing, every time I, when I was using them where I had to make changes, I had to do a big dive in their help sections. Yeah. And they do have extensive help documentation. But it always required me to kind of do a big dive. And um, it always was a bit of a hunt in their interface right. to find the bit, the section that you needed to change. Um, it was always a bit of a dive, if you know what I mean. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, so when it comes to Libsyn, it offers better entry level plan pricing, but that's that's just the dollar figure that you're seeing here. If you take a look 
at this figure, 50 MB per month. Exactly. It's like if you exactly. want to maybe publish one small audio episode per month uh, with with like a low bit rate, uh, then then maybe it works. But no serious yeah. respectable podcast, even at entry level, would would uh, find this sufficient. Then the fifteen dollars plan gives you only two fifty MB, and this is also I don't think for fifteen dollars you should be restricted to like this uh, laughable amount of of space it's 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 just it's just not right um that that's what i feel so this is my one of my biggest gripes with their offerings so for anything serious you need the 20 dollar plan and which brings us at a pretty much a, a price parity with the with the castos 19 dollars plan well based and on my experience haru any podcast and i'm not talking about thousands of downloads no my podcast my um wp tonic which is one of the largest podcasts in the word space space last month it got around five thousand downloads right mm -hmm. right um it's really quite easy to get to the 40 dollar plus with lips and with oh, any yes. podcast that's getting any kind of traction at all oh, yes Based on my Absolutely. experience, it's really very easy to get into the $40 area. Absolutely. And that's been my experience with my clients who have migrated from uh, Libsyn to, to Castos because Castos simply offered better value for money. And the advanced features that Libsyn offered, they simply didn't need it, most of my clients. Uh, so for them, it was a better choice. And with Castos, there is no limit on the amount of uh, data you can upload the limit is it's it's based on on uh, downloads uh, monthly downloads which as jonathan said he runs one of the biggest wordpress podcasts and even he gets like less than ten thousand downloads a month so if that's not a, a a concern for you then definitely castos is the way to go uh, otherwise Lipson is also as i mentioned a solid product and yeah. see all the features they offer in in terms of monetization features um they have their own um uh, like they have an advertisement network they have they integrate with with native ads that you can integrate in in episodes so they have a better ad uh okay. so ad network support than castos but castos also has some ad network support i just haven't had the chance to utilize it the clients that i was using it for used uh, Lipson and they were happy with Lipson primarily because of its support for ad networks which is great which is like some of the best in the industry and they have this Libsyn pro uh, which is which uh, which is for like enterprise grade broadcast just like they have castos premium over here which is for enterprise grade grade uh, major publishers like maybe uh, radio shows with multiple hosts doing their own podcasts and all um so let's take a look yeah, at the just WordPress. to finish off just to finish off with this but they're, they're, they're both totally rep, reputable companies. Um, Lipson, the founder, he, I've met the gentleman, I can't remember his name. He's He's got a fantastic reputation in the podcasting community. And they, they are a rock solid company, Lipson. Um, they, and they've got great support as well. It's just their pricing model and their interface. I think they've up there up, they recently updated the interface. I don't oh. know if you've logged in recently. I haven't for a while. So that we months. might be a little bit out of date when it comes to that particular area because I do know that recently they introduced an, a new interface. So yeah, this does look like a, a new a new backend, a new dashboard. Yeah. Yes, that has uh, a more modern look. So yeah, in that case. The interface issue might no longer apply, but yeah. the the other factors, the 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 storage restriction, that still applies. That and is, it does. If you get any kind of success with your podcast, it does rapidly get a bit expensive. Yes, and then there are higher tier storage plans. They get into seventy five hundred and fifty dollars, and you can reach those by. quite quickly. Three hundred megabyte for a moderately successful show. Yeah. I think that's, that's nothing. if I had been with them with my present 
5,000 downloads plus. It does vary month to month. Yeah. I'm giving a six-month average, but it's increasing. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. I would be in the $75 range. Oh, yes, definitely. You, you would be. And uh, when, when it comes to especially video podcasts, then mm -hmm. it's just going to go through the roof. And uh, the, the Castos plan for uh, the Castos plan at $9.90 a year, which is like $99 a month, this also includes unlimited video file hosting, which is like amazing. Uh, it's it's like it's like unbelievable that for for well, funny enough, much, uh, I, I, on on the it's a, it's linked on the WP Tonic on our hosting. We offer unlimited video file hosting. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Oh yes. Oh, um, uh, I didn't know that, but yeah, no that's part of my, the WP Tonic hosting. Um, we offer. Uh, like Castos, we offer a video file hosting unlimited. Oh, that's that's amazing, and that's very useful because these days, uh, pretty much everyone, instead of writing an article, they want to publish a video for their clients. Because you get, reading... you get your own account, you get your own sub account, and um, that's what we offer. But if you don't, um, if you're not into learning management system, that still could be of um, great. Um, but the only thing is, um, it's a nice option. But you know, if you're if you're going to go with Vimeo, I don't know what a Vimeo Pro account is. Um, probably uh, around ninety nine a year. Uh, yeah, no, sorry, so, that's Vimeo Plus. That's Plus Pro is probably I think a few hundred dollars, two fifty yeah. or something. And you need the Pro, really. Yeah. Um, yes. So you just have to look at your, you know, the things you're going to use and the things you're not going to use, don't mm -hmm. you? I might be wrong on the prices that I just quoted. It's just uh, I, mm -hmm. I might be mixing them up. I think you're prices, roughly I'm... right. Mm -hmm. So uh, Lipson also has. Where did my video go? Uh, oh, never mind. My screen is more important right now. So Lipson also has uh, a WordPress plugin, but it's it's like uh, it it just gives you a rudimentary sort of interface, and uh, you can still do uh, you can still publish from WordPress. It's it's not as great, or at least when I last tried, it wasn't as great as the seriously simple podcasting plugin, which is no, which it's I would always, consider best it's in always, class. But this um this might have changed because obviously I think they're responding to Castos entering the market. Um, it was always their plugin was always a bit clunky, wasn't it? But yeah, they might have updated it, aren't they? Previously, they didn't even have one, if I recall correctly. You had to just embed the episodes yes. on your WordPress site using the embed code for every episode. So this this is uh, uh, not an old plugin the way seriously simple podcasting has been around for a while this is relatively newer and it started off with a very rudimentary uh, feature set but i hope because I, I like competition healthy competition is good for everyone it's going to make castors uh, offer better products and services and then it's going to uh, just make make better choices available for every one of us so everyone benefits so uh, i hope they are catching up and uh, it will be great to see that now let's come to the third major contestant uh, who has any serious offering for WordPress. By the way, I'm limiting myself to here to three uh, providers because these are the three biggest names that people use when they integrate their podcast into, into their WordPress website or WordPress workflow. There are other providers as well. Some I might not even be able to recall. But it's an right army. there's an army of them. That, like there's, yeah. there's a number of free providers, but I would yes. warn people um about archer is one of them i think and there's a number of players in this sector and some of them do offer free accounts but nothing really is free you find that the the free accounts are very restrictive and also they're selling your data to third parties aren't they oh yes absolutely because uh if if it's being touted as something completely free there there has to be a catch if if you're not buying the product you are the product yes 
I haven't used Blueberry, but they're, um, I have used their player, which was a lot better than the previous Lipson, which I haven't used for a long while. Um, but I've never used their hosting, but they are a well-established company, aren't they? Oh, yes, they are among the best and very reliable uh, with, a, with a very strong product. And in terms of their WordPress plugin, if I would consider something to be a serious contender to uh, seriously simple podcasting, that would be the PowerPress podcasting plugin by Blueberry. So it's, it works this, pretty much the same way that Castos and seriously simple podcasting combination works. Or you can, just like seriously simple podcasting, you can use this one without using Blueberry as well. But uh, then again, if you host those files on your servers, uh, and that's not going to be great for your bandwidth and all. Um, but in terms of feature set, amazing plugin. I love it. It's, it's just that I, I find seriously simple podcasting to be better for my workflows, for, for how I've gotten used to doing things. But you can't go wrong with PowerPress uh plugin either and both are very well respected this one has like 195 five star ratings this one has a 204 five star ratings and both have very few uh lower star ratings primarily the ratings are five stars so it's it's uh it's both have proven track record of uh, of introducing better features and uh updates and support and fixing bugs now the service itself so what powerpress offers is when you buy their podcast hosting account let's say you don't even uh, have a wordpress website they'll give you a wordpress site with every account as well and that's that i think is an interesting feature for those who are just getting started and they don't want to they want to do things the wordpress way but they don't want to essentially like necessarily create a different site with a different hosting provider for just getting a podcast site so it can be a, a pretty promising starting point but their hosting wouldn't be reliable beyond just embedding their podcast episodes primarily because that's what they sell it to you for so don't expect that with this free wordpress hosting account you can install learn dash and start selling courses that just simply uh wouldn't cut it because it's an entry-level hosting plan that they've tailored to uh to provide you with a with a wordpress install with powerpress installed on it and maybe some landing pages capability and that's about it any serious resource usage beyond that and you would need a a different host but they, they can work with pretty much any host as well. So this isn't mandatory that in order to use their hosting service to use their WordPress host, uh, it's, it's up to you. And they provide you with a, a pretty decent feature set. I'm trying to find their, their uh, pricing section, yes. uh, which isn't as, uh, you know, as apparent over here as they it must is be more the expensive because they buried it, haven't they? Yeah, so I don't even know where they're buried it right now. It's okay, let's a, go to uh, podcast maybe hosting. Have, but maybe it's yeah. under podcast types. Oh, yes. Um, so, it's, yeah, there, there should be a pricing uh, label over here, pricing link over here that makes things so much more simple. It's like, like uh, over here, the, these guys, Lipson guys, have got pri plans and pricing. Castos has uh, pricing just straight up here. And with these guys, you have, you're not sure where you're going to find it. And it's, it's a pet peeve of mine. I hate it when sites do this in navigation. They don't have a, they're selling a product or a service and they don't have a straightforward pricing page. I hate that. Okay, so coming to their, their plans, they've got a 12 and a $20 per month uh, plan. Yeah, but with, look at those, with, look at, look yes. at them. That, that, that at is low. Figures. What happens yes. when you read, does it tell you what happens when you read, go over it? Oh. Yes. So then they want you uh -huh. to switch over to their pro hosting that starts at $100 a month and goes up from there based on your not storage. That's a good thing that with $100 a month, you get unlimited storage, but then they bill you uh, one cent per GB exceeding the first one TB. And it, this, it, this, could, it, this could rapidly get a bit expensive. Oh, could yes. It? Like if, if even one of your episodes goes viral, it gets shared by some industry influencer in your niche, uh, you're probably going to end up with, with uh, a far larger bill than, than you were anticipating because 
bandwidth uh, consumption it can it can like based on so anything going viral bandwidth consumption can completely crash your the budget that that you plan um so that's something to consider other than that excellent service you can't go wrong with seriously oh yeah you can't go I, wrong I with think, either, any of these yeah i think but um i just do the value think, for money i, I just do not off. think i just do not think it's a good idea having your website your main marketing website linked to any kind of particular service yeah. because um it just can be painful my you know it is wordpress so you should be able to migrate it to somewhere else shouldn't you but um i just don't like the idea but it's not i'm not putting any any um, negativity on the um, blueberry as a company well i've heard they're another re very reputable company would you agree with that Oh, yes, they are. And uh, all three of these providers, they're reputable. They are very serious about the business they're in. Uh, they're not here to make a quick buck and uh, vanish. They're in it for the, for the long haul. Uh, they have a proven track record. So you can't go wrong with any of them. But in terms of the value for money you get, it's, it's really hard to beat Castos's offering. And that's why I, I use it. And that's why I recommend it for my clients as well. And their interface is really easy to use. And um, absolutely, I think their support, you know, what I've support I've got you now might be a bit different because they are sponsoring my show and they do know that I'm a major influencer in the WordPress space. So, um, but I, I just get the impression in general, they're extremely helpful people. So, oh, yes, they are. I think that's been your experience, hasn't it? Oh, yes, absolutely. For multiple clients, whenever I needed to contact their support, they were responsive and they, they were helpful. But that's not to say that the competitors aren't responsive no. or helpful. Uh, they're, no. they're also running very reputed, very, very yeah. that's why I picked these three top players for, for recommendation over here. But again, value for money among these three. Hard to beat Castos. So, um, are there any other things that you think people should be aware of or need to know when they're getting into the world of podcasting with um, WordPress? In terms, in terms of uh, managing the technical side, it's like it's it's not all that difficult. It's just like using another software as a service platform and having. Uh, the the standard WordPress interface for for uh, uploading episodes and all. Um, in terms of the the actual running the show side, I'm sure you'd be able to shed more light on that than me because you've been running a successful podcast of your own. So I, in fact, I think let, let me yeah, yeah I, let I me think reverse the main, that question to you. All right, thank you. I think the main thing is that if you do start to get you know um it's like all things on the internet now um um podcasting's growing but the amount of new people that are entering into podcasting has increased enormously as well um you've really got to make a decision am i going to go into live video am i going to build attempt to build a youtube channel rather than podcasting or is podcasting am i going to focus on podcasting rather than youtube um you can do both obviously but that's double the work or triple the work um what normally works in podcasting probably do does sometimes work on youtube but in general it doesn't they you need a different type of show format to be successful when it comes to video um the other thing is if you do start to get some traction um obviously you need to find it's best to find a niche inside a particular sector um what does take a lot of time which you probably have to do yourself initially is editing you as you get any kind of traction you want to unload the editing 
to somebody else you know you, there are pl plenty of resources online there's plenty of um, editors um, audio editors that are available on various freelancer platforms you want to try uh, and employ one of those as quickly as possible if oh, yes. you um, because it will save you an enormous amount of time that spending a tremendous amount of time on editing really does suck out all the joy of podcasting also not just the joy but also the energy yes yes you, you that really... you could spend on creating uh, and like uh, planning and creating the next episode uh, probably the next three episodes uh, would be probably the time you end up in editing one exactly and the other thing is unless you're going to do the audio um, the episodes yourself and just talk to the mic for half an hour and some people can do that successfully but it's a bit of an art form or you've got a co-host or um, two co-hosts and you're doing an internal discussion you normally are going to um, invite guests um, that does take more time up you know it's surprising the back and forth the research you got to do on guests there are podcasting um, uh, outreach companies that outreach to you if you're if you are getting any traction but you still got to check over their the people that they suggest suggest um, to see if they're a good fit for your show or you've got to do a lot of um, a fair bit of research and then approach people with this exchange of email the time soon builds up with all the back and forth and a lot of people um, are very enthusiastic initially but after the 10th podcast that they do it's called pod fading basically they lose a, they lose interest and the podcast disappears so but you really got to give it six months at least to really see if you're starting to get any kind of traction that would be my advice and doing a weekly some the other mechanics is that a lot of people um, do multiple episodes in one day either they're talking to the mic themselves or they they've got a couple of co-hosts or they arrange guests to come on or they do a series of four and five podcasts in one day i i don't like doing that i find that exhausting so i we we have a guest come on every week and i also do a, a round table show um, I find that less mentally exhausting, but it does mean um, I'd also have a co-host just uh, that helps with the interview. And also if the guest for some reason doesn't come on the show, we can do an internal discussion. But there's various ways of doing it. Um, I just find having multiple shows planned out in one day is... I find that even more stressful than just doing it once a week. But it does mean you've got your, your committed day, week after week after week. And it's, yeah. you're in it for the long term. It's, you're not going to get results instantaneously, are you, Harun? Absolutely. And what I'd like to add here is if you are building, let's say, just a podcast publishing business, then yes, maybe having multiple shows in a day, because then that's what you're doing for a living. You're a podcaster for a living. Uh, that, that is your gig. Then that makes sense. But if you 
are uh, a professional in some other field or even in that field, but you, your primary gig is offering some sort of service and your podcast is supposed to be a, a supporting medium for that rather than your primary business. Then uh, what Jonathan said, and that's going to apply to most of us because most of us are not building podcasts as like our, our core primary business. Uh, it's, it's, it's something to assist us in our business, to help reach out to more people, to help engage with more people, to help brainstorm with more people, mm -hmm. share the knowledge with the industry. So for that purpose, you don't want to do multiple shows in a day. No, you probably I, don't I, even I, want to do multiple shows. The, in a week. Um, the sponsorship that I receive from our major sponsors is most welcome, but it only covers the actual expense of the editing, the hosting, the transcribing of the shows. It basically um, covers the basic costs of running a show because it, it it all mounts up. So the sponsorship means it doesn't cover my time. Um, I just do it to build influence. And basically, I don't even get much um in commercial terms from it it just builds my credibility and i meet a lot of people um but my business is driven by paid advertisement and seo um that's where uh, i obtain the actual clients for wp tonic um but i do it because it supplies traffic to the website credos and i meet a lot of interesting people so that's why i right. keep doing it so I think we'll wrap this up. I think I think it's been quite good, actually. I think uh, yes. give us some feedback, please, if you found this useful. Also, subscribe to the show and also give us a thumbs up, not a thumbs. Well, I'll leave that or, to your Or your... a thumbs down twice. If you give yeah. us a thumbs down, make, make sure you do it twice rather than just once. Yeah, right. Fair enough. We'll see you soon. We're going we're gonna to do another one, which is going to this month, which is going to be about building funnels using like three or four of the major plugins so you can build real funnels for yourself or for clients that are real click funnel killers mm -hmm. we'll see you and soon I think, folks. Hey, go on. So, sorry sorry to interrupt i think uh, we can even do one more episode on on podcasting where yeah we, well, if you want to a more yeah. hands-on because today we discussed the theory the best practices the tools the next one could be actually setting up a seriously simple podcasting on a wordpress install and integrating it with the castos service uh to show you well, how haru's decided so we're going to be doing that folks and next month we do the funnel thing um that's been decided so that's what we're doing for the next um workshop this month we'll see you soon folks bye